Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chris and welcome back to another An Average Gamer's Guide to Total War Rome 2. Now today I'm going to go ahead and go over Army Composition. This is going to be one of uh, four installments that I have planned out. Today we're going to be looking at the Balanced Army Composition, how to build what I consider a balanced army. This is just my opinion, but I'm going to go over a couple different factions um, of different cultures to give you guys an idea. So uh, there's going to be three more guides. There's going to be a skirmish army guide. There's going to be a rush army guide, and there's going to be a mil uh, mobility army guide. So I hope you guys stick around for all four. Anyways, though, before we get started, I want to go ahead and give you what I consider my general principles for what a balanced army looks like. Now, again, this is just my opinion. Take it with a grain of salt. Just an average gamer like yourself, but this typically works out for me. Alright, so my general principles start as this. I typically have my main force or my main infantry body be about two ranks deep. And I don't mean that I take one unit and spread it to where there's only two ranks of infantry. What I mean is I usually have one whole unit in front and units behind it. I usually have about two of them because I just feel like it works best that way. Uh, I almost always deploy even cavalry on my flanks because I like to try to be able to counter uh, you know, on either side equally. I always, always have spear flank support, so that means I have some kind of spear unit, not pike unit, but spear unit, sitting on the sides to support my cavalry, and I always deploy my skirmishers in the beginning, and then I will focus them on whatever I consider the weakest point in the line. It's almost never, that's almost never the cavalry fight on the side, but that's not to say you can't use them. So, with my general principles in, Calculate it out, and you guys can see. Let's go ahead and jump into what I consider a general army build. Now, I'm going to let you know right now, I'm not going to go over Rome. I feel like <clears throat> a lot of people have played Rome. A lot of people understand um, how Rome works and stuff like that. And if you don't, in all honesty, these general principles can be easily understood when you look at Rome. If you look at the Roman army and what they can pick from, they have plenty of melee infantry, spear infantry, everything. They, I mean, the only thing they really lack is basically shot cavalry, missile cavalry. And even then, like, that doesn't necessarily matter because they got so much extra stuff going for them. So you can use the general principles from this to build just about any army. I'm going to go over everything from Parthia to the Iceni. So uh, hopefully you guys can just figure it out based on exactly which one you're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and load up. Let's go ahead and start with Parthia. Now I want to go ahead and preface this one with the fact that... Actually, this one in Sparta, those two are probably the hardest factions to actually have what I consider a balanced army. Because... Parthia's strength is in cavalry, so they're probably going to be better off as a rush or mobility army, maybe even a skirmish army if done properly. Um, and then Sparta has to f is very, very, very infantry focused, um, and so they're probably going to be better off as uh, a rush army. Um, they're probably just a rush army, maybe a mobility army, but I highly doubt that with the lack of cavalry. Anyways, so this is how I would build um, what I considered a relatively balanced Parthian army. Okay, so I am a fan of um, having the most mobile mobile general possible, so I usually go for the Royal Cataphracts. I, there's no point building Noble Horse Archers because they're just more easily routed, in my opinion. Um, I'll go over generals um, in a different guide. I feel like that is a whole guide in of itself. So for that matter, please don't take that into consideration. Just play with whichever one is your favorite. How I would uh, deploy my army here is I have six Parthian swordsmen, but I would... It personally um, display my front rank of four Parthian f uh, swordsmen, and then I would put um, in my second rank, I would have two Parthian swordsmen in the center, and then my mercenary hoplites on the side of my second rank, because they're th my mercenary hoplites ideally are going to be either as flanking actions of my own, or they're going to be used to help support the cavalry fights on the side. So... Uh, if you do end up going up against an enemy where he has more than four uh, infantry units up in front, take your reserve uh, Parthian swordsman and either just try to secure your sides when he tries to envelop you or try to uh, envelop him before he gets you. So try to push yours a little bit farther forward. But again, I would try my best to reserve my hoplites, ideally for the cavalry fight or my own push um, against around him to try to envelop him. 
Anyways, though, so what I would deploy on each side, um, I went with three Royal Cataphracts and then three Noble Blood Cavalry. Now, a lot of people just like to spam the Noble or the Royal Cataphracts because they believe that uh, just because they're the best, then they're going to do really well. But you got to remember, um, even though they're the best cavalry for the Parthians and arguably in the game, um, just because of that does not mean they're going to have very good sustained fight. They are meant to shock. They have... Uh, if you bring them into infantry units, they will just throw tons of guys um, out of position because of the weight that they carry behind them. So the way I like to use my shock cavalry, especially because you're probably going to have to fight um, some kind of cavalry on the sides um, when you first initiate, I usually use uh, what I consider my normal uh, light or medium cavalry. So for my, in this case, I use my noble blood cavalry. I try to engage them first, try to get... Um, one or two of them, ideally not smashed up, but maybe like one on the right, one on the left to hit the main unit that I want to lock down. Try to wait in, like they'll sustain, that's what they're meant for. They're meant to sustain a little bit longer. Maybe not light so much, but the more medium and heavy, uh, you know, uh, normal cavalry. They'll sustain for a while, and then I like to take my royal cataphracts and try to ram them um, in the flank or in the side, uh, or sorry, in the, <laughs> in the rear of whatever um, cavalry fights going on so a total envelopment if you can do that especially on the um the parthians you're going to win that cavalry fight now that's assuming uh once all the balancing issues have been fixed i know there's some issues with like noble horse and so like that and so these guides as a side preface are not meant to deal with those bugs these are meant to deal when the game is finally balanced i want these guys to be something that can be used a year or two down the line so that's i'm not even going to bother touching on stuff like you know some of the current bugs because they will be gone within the next, you know the upcoming weeks and months anyways though so that's how i would deploy my cavalry on the side i would assume with parthia that chances are my my center line is probably not going to hold compared to my flanks so i want to try to get those flanks to fold as fast as possible my Parthian horse archers, I would, I'd probably deploy them all on one side. I'd probably hold them in reserve until I see exactly how everything's engaging, and then I would try to use um, the Parthian horse archers to rain down support on wherever I think is uh, justifiable. The best thing about having these guys as horse archers is because you can get them behind enemy lines. So if every single flank and everything is engaged, you can take your Parthian horse archers behind the enemy and shoot them. And remember, there is a morale debuff for uh, being under missile fire. So if you're under missile fire and you're being shot in the back, those troops are much more likely to route. So if you can engage with your flanks on, your, on Parthia, and especially if you can get the Royal Cataphracts that full envelopment on their cavalry, you're likely to win that fight. And then while they're busy fighting, you can take your Parthian horse archers around and you can shoot them in the back, ideally either on the cavalry fight or on the infantry fight in the center. That's just how I would probably play it. It is a little intensive on what people call macro or their micro. So uh, micro wing is just like a, you see like StarCraft players do it, where they just a ton of like movement clicks and stuff like that. Micro is just managing like micromanaging all of your units. Um, it takes a little bit more work uh, because of the fact that you want to make sure that they're staying out of combat, like actual melee combat, but still being used to their full effect. Anyways. That's how I would deploy Parthian horse archers. And again, there are um, there's like royal horse or noble horse archers and stuff like that. I chose not to use them because their armor slows them down when it comes to movement. These guys are going to be a little bit uh, faster. And also their missile damage is going to be higher. It's only five on the chart, but that does add up considering that uh, archery does not necessarily pierce heavy armor very easily. So when you're going up against you know these heavy hoplites, these heavy infantry, which a lot of these factions have, you want to try to use that to your advantage. I hate, I hate, hate, hate cavalry peltis because their range is so short that if you get there's no point you're not going to be able to fire on my cavalry unless they're already engaged or not half the time you get one volley off on infantry they're just micro nightmares because chances are they might get three good volleys off before you fail to micro them properly and they get in melee combat and they fail so having that little extra range does make a big difference and then, of course, I finish up with Elephants. I really do feel like Elephants are a great unit for that because for Parthia, again, I don't expect my center to hold very long. I expect the sides, uh, my, my flanks, to do the best. So I would try to take my War Elephants either to engage them, depending on how many skirmishes and what kind of skirmishes they have up in front. I would try to use them to engage quite early on, or I would try to use it on like a weak spot try away from my units or... Ideally, again, to get in around the back and then charge through. A little bit harder with elephants. Depends on the match you're playing, but that's exactly how I would try to use them. So I, I throw them in there. 
But let's go ahead and look at uh, the next one. I'm going to check out is Pontus. You guys, if you guys have been following my channel for a while, you know that I predominant, predominantly uh, play Pontus. So I feel like I'm just going to throw this in there because this is something I feel like I have I've had a lot of experience with. So, and again, I really love Pontus, so I highly encourage you guys to try it out if you haven't. I mean, it's really a great faction to play. So. Again, I start off with um, a normal cavalry general. Unfortunately for me, I hate the fact that this is shot cavalry. I would like it to be instead to be like normal sustained melee cavalry, but that's just me personally. Um, my front row that I'm going to build is going to be for uh, for these bronze shield pikemen units because they are considered heavy infantry. They're going to do a fairly good job at um, bloodying up whatever their the enemy's main uh, front ranks are. Um, you can, I would say, at minimum spread them out to about two ranks deep. Ideally, I would say four to five, but three to two ranks deep is probably, p I mean, ideally three, but so two ranks if you absolutely have to, if the enemy front line is that big, but you're best off trying to at go to about four to five, you know, if you can do three. So the more ranks deep, the, the longer the formation is going to hold, the more damage uh, they're going to be able to get out. Because the entire idea is to keep them at length. If you don't have that density, they're going to be able to get in. And then the guy holding the pike in front now has to drop it and turn it into a sword. Um, and that's going to let more and more guys in. So your formation is not going to last as long. You're not going to be able to get the kind of kills that you need. And that rolls into uh, my second rank is going to be Pontic Swordsman. These are the, I think, the heaviest infantry besides Hoplites. Uh, when it comes to like actual sword infantry that they have, these are the heaviest infantry they have. Um, they're considered very heavy, but when you look at some of the Romans that have like 90 and 95 like freaking armor, they're not very heavy at all. Um, but again, that goes into a balancing issue. Uh, I digress. So, but the Pontic Swordsmen, I usually would deploy them in the center, um, and then I would have or uh, on my second uh, front line, and I'd have my hoplites on the side. Um, Having four units of Pontic Swordsmen, um, if your center line is holding very well, again, if you have the four to five ring seats, feel free to try to envelop the enemy using all four of your uh, Pontic Swordsmen. Because, again, you don't have to worry about them. You shouldn't have to worry about them, ideally, uh, with the, uh, getting flanked because you have hoplites on either side. Um, I go for the four slingers. Um, you notice that this is different than Parthia. Parthia didn't have any um, forward slingers. I don't feel like that's necessary because of the fact that you want to focus on cavalry and you still want to have some kind of sustained front end. Um, your front your front line is not going to last very long, to me anyways, in, uh, for Parthia. So you're probably better off using those horse archers to your advantage. But we're on Pontus. So I would try to keep the hoplites on the side again to either envelop the main line or the main force, if, uh, or Ideally, to try to use them to uh, win whatever cavalry fight is going on on the side. They are very effective against that. Don't forget, they are spear infantry, and they're more mobile than uh, your normal pike, your pikemen. Your pikemen do not have rapid advance. Almost, I don't think I've seen a single one that has rapid advance. Hoplites have rapid advance. So when you got those crazy cavalry fights going on, and you need to get them in there fast to turn that tide, boom, you can pop that rapid advance, and you can get in there. And so that's why I tend to use hoplites instead of uh, pikemen, even though they would be ideally better suited to take them on if they were front end. So I have my four slingers. I deploy them in the front and um, I would typically focus them on trying to uh, get them to one side or the other um, on my flanks after the initial engagement, um, pulling them obviously behind, getting them to the sides and pelting um, from the sides instead of trying to go directly over the heads of my guys. There's less likely that they're going to actually end up hitting my guys. Get them to the sides and try to uh, shoot over. Again, that takes a lot of micro. You can always use them to help support the cavalry fight depending on how it's going. Chances are you'll probably be better off against infantry than you would be against uh, cavalry. Um, I use my Noble Blood Cavalry here um, as I put one on each side and then one Celtic light horse on each side. I'm going to charge in as soon as I can. Um, obviously within certain distance of my hoplites to make sure that they're still there to support. I'm going to try to use them to um, engage as soon as I can with whatever cavalry I can to try to lock them down because they are meant to sustain more. Um, and uh, Sorry. Yeah, it's just the same more. And then I'm going to use my Celtic light horse to try to get in ideally a light charge or a, flank, or a rear charge because they're only light horses, but their charge bonus um, is relatively good for their price. So you notice that it's 11 points higher. Um, they're not going to sustain as long, but if you can get in a good charge on the rear, especially because I also add in the Pontic Royal Cavalry, these are... Um, that you know these are the real shock troopers here. So this is where if you notice that one flank of cavalry is uh, stronger than the other on the enemy side, you can use it. Again, you do have the bonus of 
your general being shock cavalry, but I like to, again, try to use my general as a general. Lead from the infantry front, um, especially when you have actual strong frontline infantry. It's always a benefit to do that. So that's how I would deploy out a Pontic army. Now let's go ahead and look at Sparta. So this is, again, what I mentioned earlier. This one is going to be hard to build as what I consider a balanced army. It is relatively possible, but you have to understand your strength. So obviously for Sparta, um, they are kind of the opposite of Parthia. With Parthia, when you fight, you want to try to turn your flanks as soon as possible because your main body, your infantry body, is probably not going to last as long. This is the opposite. Chances are, um, playing Sparta, you're going to win the melee fight in the middle. Again, ignoring the bugs that are currently in the game. Um, and you're you're probably going to win the fight on the main front lines, especially if you do everything correctly. Um, your cavalry is very weak, and you only have one kind. You do have some missile cavalry, but you only have one kind of melee cavalry, and it is very weak compared to a lot of the other heavy cavalry that's out there. Um, so the way I would build it is I would have Royal Spartans as my general, because he already has a general bonus. Um, there's no point in doing Heroes of Sparta, because if you can do Heroes of Sparta, have um, they have themselves a morale uh, ring that goes around them. So they can instill morale in the units uh, surrounding them. So I why waste an extra morale unit on your general when they already have a morale boost, right? So you can basically get three units that boost morale instead of just only two. That's how I see it. So my front rank, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, Spartan Pikemen. They're not super strong compared to a lot of these uh, other Pikemen, but they will do a good job of blooding up the front line. Again, before that, I would probably put some Helot Slingers, um, and I would use them the same way before. I would try to put them, on this, uh, put them in the rear and to ideally support... Um, whatever spot I find to be the weakest in the enemy lines rather than trying to help out where I am weakest because you don't want to reinforce failure okay that's something that you learn from Sun Tzu's Art of War you want to reinforce where you're strongest so go if you can turn the enemy flank then he will not be able to capitalize on where you have faltered so try to turn their flanks always try to make sure that you're the one making them react that's pro tip number one so front line is going to be six units of um, Spartan pikemen, so it's going to be a nice wide front. Again, try to keep them as deep as possible, about four to five ranks. Um, and then behind that, I would have, going from the center out, I would ideally have Royal Spartans, and then I would have Heroes of Sparta, um, and then I would have another unit of Royal Spartans. So it would be two center units would be Royal Spartans. And again, these are all ideal, so basis on um, how much money you have, what technology in your campaign or your multiplayer or whatever. But I would have two Royal Spartans in the center, then I'd have a Spartan Heroes, and then I'd have more Royal Spartans. These are already really tough units to take down, and now you have two units of Royal Spartans giving the morale boost of your Spartan Heroes. Okay, and again, all these guys have rapid advance, so this is why I say they, they might have the chance of being a good uh, rush army, because you can get in there. Okay. Um, and then, obviously, on the flanks, you're going to deploy... Uh, I Probably on each side, I'd deploy two uh, Citizen Cavalry. Um, the two Royal Spartans on the sides, you might obviously need to turn them to support your cavalry. Chances are you're going to need to, depending on how your enemies built his army. So, you know, your main body force, once you get to your Royal Spartans, is probably only going to be four guys. Depends on how the battle's moving. You know, you guys can adjust to the ebb and flow. But that's how I would support uh, a Spartan army, at least relatively balanced. And then, last but not least, we go to the Iceni. Now, I, f I look at the Iceni because, as far as I can tell now, the Averni are basically broken. Because if I wanted to just give you a way to victory, I would tell you to spam Sacred Ban and spam Noble Horse and charge it at the enemy and never lose. And if I told you to play as um, the Swaby, the Swaby... Uh, they have really strong berserkers right now. They are really, really overpowered. So I focus on the one that seems to be relatively balanced right now. Um, at least I'm hearing a lot less complaints about them. So um, the way I build it is I would, again, I go for the most mobile general possible. I did um, painted ones because these are like the idea of berserkers. I would have this be my front ranks. There are no pikemen. Um, that I that I know of uh, on the yeah that I've seen. So I went for trying to get in. Uh, get in quickly and get in some damage. When you're going against um, like Greek city states, especially the pikemen in the beginning, this is going to be a little bit of a weaker build because of that front end. You might need to play a little bit more mobile. You might want to try to take these painted ones around the flank. 
especially if they're ahead of your initial your your actual main body, then it's going to be good for you to try to move them to the sides and get them off whack if they are a very pike centric uh, army because their best bet is to get in close and get in there. They're not going to last uh, a hell of a long time compared to your main infantry, but the whole point is to tire out and ideally, if you can, get it to where there is the morale deficiency on the enemy units where it says that um, worried about sustaining casualties. If you can get that, then when you bring in your second rank, which I've built as uh, heroic nobles and druidic nobles, um, you're going to be much better off. Again, it's going to be a little bit hard. You have to play around when you go up against um, a heavy pike army, but you know that's just based on how you actually um, move you guys around the map. So what I would do is kind of, again, similar to what I did in Sparta, I would have my center unit, uh, a heroic noble, my druidic nobles on either flank of that, and then heroic nobles on either flank of that. Uh, the entire second rank would be flanked by a chosen spear band on each side. Again, this goes back to the principle of always having spear support on your flanks to support your cavalry. In front, of course, I'm going to have uh, my slingers. Um, if I haven't mentioned already, I way prefer slingers. They have the longest range in the game. They have tons of ammunition. Um, they have consistent damage over armor types. Obviously, it does play a little bit of a difference, but the fact that they're able to actually puncture uh, heavy armor better than arch, uh, bows is totally worth it, especially when you take into the ammo and the range. Um, and they're usually a lot lighter and a little bit more, fa a little bit faster moving, just a little bit faster moving than the rest of your skirmishers. So that's a definite, uh, definite plus. Um, and then I use uh, four, or sorry, five units of heroic riders because the heroic riders are pretty good um, cavalry. I didn't really opt for the idea of. Uh, trying to smash in on the sides because these heroic riders are actually pretty well rounded um, from what I've seen and what I've played with them. So I would try to again try to use an envelopment. So try to engage with one unit, let the enemy uh, engage as much as possible on that one unit, and then try to get in a flank or ideally a rear charge on whatever cavalry fight is going there, and then bring in your spear band. So if you can get in a rear charge and bring in spear support, so now you have them in basically a death pit. Um, you know, uh, Sun Tzu called it um, death ground. He saw it in an idealistic way, but um, if you can put them in a, a situation where they are not mobile, this is something that Hannibal did in one of his victories over Rome. He enveloped the entire army. If you can do that on your flanks in a little mini fight and just squeeze them, you're going to your chances are you're going to win. It's very rare that um, with all those different penalties from a flank and a rear charge that you're going to lose that. But again. You know, that's all depending on exactly how it plays out. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. This is something um, that I'm going to expand on again. I'm going to be doing three more guides on how I build them. Uh, once the game gets a little bit more balanced out, I want to try to do a multiplayer uh, demonstration on how I win. And if I can, how, of course I lose, uh, how, uh, how to improperly play uh, each one of these kinds of armies. So I want to try to use that as an example for you guys, um, but I want to wait until I can actually not run into a bunch of Averni armies and a bunch of uh, Swaby armies and stuff like that where it's just a spam of units. I want to play against people who actually think about the combat and enjoy the game that way. So, But it's going to happen, and this game is gonna have, always has longevity. These Total War games always have a lot of longevity, so that's what these guys are meant for. Um, so yeah, so look forward to those. Uh, if I haven't already, like this, if you're watching this months later, I'm probably gonna link this in my anna uh, in an annotation somewhere along this video. So click on that if you want to see this uh, being displayed. Um, but until then, please like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate your viewership, and I'll see you guys next time.